<laughs> Glad to be here this morning. Glad that you all are here. It's uh, something special this morning. I like this morning. This is probably one of my, if I had a, to pick a time to preach, if the Lord allowed me to do it, today would be my, all. Oh, I preach every time. I love to do it. And I, I've been very blessed, and I'm glad Dad went into it. Talk about the ladies and the, the Marys, as you would say, that went in and found Jesus, and they found him not there. And they found him. He had risen. The angel said, he, he's not here. He's risen. And that's why you're here today. If you're here for any other reason, you've wasted your time. Amen. Amen. Breakfast is sure good, but it ain't that good. Amen. No offense, boys. Jesus is a lot sweeter than the breakfast we're about to eat. Amen. He's a lot better than the biscuits and the gravy. Yeah. He's a lot better than the ham and the sausage, praise God. But I'm glad this morning that we are here because we have a risen Savior. And I'm glad today that you're here because I hope you believe that He is a risen Savior. I hope that's the reason you're here today. And Dad began to talk about Mary's, and I want to go just a little bit farther than that on Luke chapter number 24. There's a few men I'd like to talk with you about this morning. We're going to find these two men on the road to a city or village called Emmaus. And we'll find this is just not long after the resurrection morning and not long after the ladies had found that Jesus was not in the tomb. It'll be <coughs> Luke chapter number 24. We're going to start verse 13. There's going to be a little bit of reading, but I hope today the Lord being my helper that I'll be able to bring you a message that the Lord really helped me with. Y'all know I like, I get excited real easy. And I, I tell you, this morning it's real easy to get excited about, Brother Glenn. This is the morning, this morning, do y'all realize, I wasn't going to say it to the end, do y'all realize that every belief system, every book, every song in that red back hymnal, every song ever written, Every, about the Lord, it hinges on this Amen. morning. Amen. Everything that you believe, everything in this book, it, it, this would be just another book. It would be wasted right. pages, except the Savior right. arose from the grave. Amen. Except there be an empty tomb, they would have never been a filled book. And I'm glad this morning that we have something that's alive. We have something. I, I, I better read before I get, out of, I get out of hand. This is what the Bible says. I'm excited if you can't tell. In verse 13 it says, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together all the things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them said, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Hast thou not known the things which are come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have him crucified. But we trusted that if it had been he which should have redeemed Israel, and beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And which found, they found not his body. And they came saying that they, that they had also seen vision of angels. Which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher. And found it even so as the women had said it. But, they, him, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded upon them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto him, the, unto the village whither they went, and he made, and he made as though he would, would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them, and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took the bread and he blessed it, and brake it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. 
And they said one to another, Did our, not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. I'm going to ask my nana if she'll say a prayer over this word. As I begin to read the scripture, this is not a message that is probably normally preached upon this morning as a sunrise service. But I really feel the need to share it with the things that the Lord shared with me. And I begin to read about these two men. I've always been interested with this story. Because it don't say, in a reality, it doesn't say much. It doesn't say a whole lot. But you find these two men, they're leaving Jerusalem. They're leaving where Jesus was at, where he was buried. And they're going to another place called Emmaus. Emmaus around, I believe if I did my math right, around 40 miles. Not a too far of a journey away from Jerusalem. And as they begin to walk away, these two men, they begin to talk with each other. They were sad. They were depressed. They were confused. They didn't understand the things that had happened. Even though Jesus had told them they were one of the believers, they were one of the disciples at the time, they believed in those things that he said. But they were having a hard time believing what the women and the other disciples had told them. They were having a hard time understanding that Jesus really did rise from the grave. If they would have understood it, Daddy, they would have never left Jerusalem. But since they were leaving, they were having a hard time. They were wanting to walk away. And they wanted to, do, they wanted to talk about things that was uncomfortable to them. They were uncomfortable with this situation. They were uncomfortable with the fact of not knowing. They were uncomfortable with the fact of being confused. And I know that each and every one of us, I don't like to be confused. I don't like to be sad. I don't like to feel vulnerable. I want to be strong. And these men were at a vulnerable state in their life. And they were walking away from everything that they had believed in. We find that out even in their sadness and their confusion that there is a stranger that walks up. He's a stranger to them, but it is Jesus and might I say to you, there is no need to walk away. That's what I want to preach on. There is no need to walk away. This morning as these men were walking, even though they're confused and even though they're having a hard time, in the middle of their hard time confusion, Jesus appears unto them. But yet they are having a hard time believing. They don't even realize it's Him. They don't realize it's Him. And how many times in our life we all walk a road on our, this road of life and we all walk down and we have a hard time recognizing the Savior when He appears to us. We have a hard time and we're walking away from everything that He was. We're walking away from the tomb. These boys were walking away from it. They, it wasn't that they didn't want nothing to do with it, but they didn't believe enough to just hang around and see for themselves because it didn't say they hung around and saw. It was the other disciples and the other Marys that hung around. These boys didn't give it time. They said He's dead. At this point, they they thought grave robbers had got his grave. They had thought he had, somebody had moved his body. But there is, we find that Jesus came to them. It's amazing to me that no matter how far they walked away, Jesus came to them. After his suffering and after his pain and after his death, Jesus came to them. It didn't matter which direction. If they'd have walked the other way to Syria, if they'd have walked the other way, anywhere else or Samaria, He would have followed them. But they chose Emmaus. I couldn't find anything about Emmaus, but they were going somewhere to rest. Pretty much Emmaus means it was hot springs. It's where they would go and take a rest after the things. And they wanted to go find a place of contentment. But on their road to finding contentment, contentment found them. The Jesus Himself. And there's so many folks walking away from the Lord and walking away from the truth that He's risen. But Jesus has come by on your road today that He might be able to tell you, hold on boys, what's going on? Why are you walking away? Why are you doing these things? And they honestly don't even, they say, buddy, have you not heard? Have you not heard? Just a few days ago, our Lord, the one we thought was the prophet that's supposed to redeem Israel, the one that's supposed to set us free, he was laid down, he was crucified, he was laid in a barn tomb. He said, and all these things, the government has taken him, and all these things, and Mary began, and they told him, Mary, and if you really do some studying around Cleophas, his wife was one of the Marys that found him. 
found the empty tomb. One side of the family's got no problem believing, but the other side's having a hard time. And how many times in our life today is one side of the family of God having a hard time believing, but the other side's having an easy time believing? There's too many folks walking away from God. There's too many folks walking away from the truth of the matter. There's no need to walk away. There's no need to walk away from the truth that he, we have a risen Savior. Hey. I, have a, I have a good time in mornings like this. Something about, I know the last three Easter's, yeah, I've started to pay attention. It seems like the birds sing a little louder. It seems like the, it just gets real calm. It seems like the sun just, like the, clouds, the clouds roll back. It's a proud view of the sun about to rise up. And I don't know about you, I've never paid it no attention to about three years ago when I was up one morning and I had to preach on the sunrise service at Hickory Grove. And I walked out the yard and I began to look. I said, my, my, ain't it pretty outside? I, I, ain't it just lovely out here? It's amazing that the earth all around will begin to quiet down. It'll begin to... To calm down. The birds will begin to sing his praises. I, I, Y'all can believe that if you want to. I'm going to go with it because I like it. I like to hear the bird. I believe, it says if we don't praise him that the rocks will cry out. And if the rocks will cry you know the bird's going to sing. Praise God. There's no need to walk away. No need. And I begin to read the scripture and I begin to look around and you'll see these men... As they walk and talk with Jesus, Jesus says, you fools. And he wasn't being derogatory toward them. He was telling them that you just don't understand. That Christ had to be crucified so he could get to his glory. Amen. And he began to expound upon the scriptures. I love how it says concerning himself. And he started in with Moses, the prophet Moses. And a lot of commentaries, when you read them, they, they try to jot down what he might have said. It doesn't necessarily say. They just say he started with Moses. So they agree that he started in Genesis. He started from the beginning to the end of the Scriptures to that point. And we begin to look and some of the things that popped out in the Old Testament for me was maybe in the book of Genesis when he started with Moses. It was the promised child, the promised seed which was to come. He began to tell them of the promise that was made many, many years ago to them. And he began to tell them how... Abraham was promised of these promised child and it was foreshadowing of the promised child which was to come. And then later on in Isaiah, it refers to the suffering servant. It says that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. His by his stripes we are healed. In Zechariah it tells that he is the pierced one. He would have to be pierced. It foreshadows him being pierced on the cross and being hung up there. Oh, and then in Malachi, praise God, it tells us that he is the messenger of the new covenant. And if you don't know what a covenant is, it is the new agreement. It's the new way I can have salvation. I ain't got to die and go to hell. Thank God for the new covenant. And because of the new, oh, hallelujah. It took him being pierced. It took him being striped. It took him being whipped and died for a new covenant to came. But because he is who he said he is, I have life and I can have it more abundantly. I ain't got to die and go to hell. I ain't got to have life just any old way. Satan can't have his way with me because there is a risen Savior and there is a risen God. He is God of Jehovah Jireh. He will provide. He provided in the beginning. He'll provide in the end. I'm glad today that he is who he said he is. And there's no no need not to believe it this morning. There's no need to walk away from it. There's no need not to believe the Word of God. There's no need not to believe in what He said. There's no need to believe not to believe in who He is. There's no need. He is who He said He was. And if these boys would have realized the book of the book of John, the first chapter, the first verse, it says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God." The word of the Lord came to these boys and they didn't even realize it. The word of the Lord came unto them. God Himself spoke to them. God Himself walked with them. 
God Himself, hallelujah, showed them a better way. God Himself revealed Himself to them. And these boys, I ain't even got to the part I'm going to get happy about. But I'm so glad there's no need not to doubt. There's no need not to believe in Him. There's no need to walk away from Him. You, you can do anything. You don't need to walk away. You don't need to quit believing. Don't stop believing. I'm glad this morning that He is who He says He is. He is that messenger of the covenant. That He is alive and He is well. And this morning I can rejoice that all is well. It's well with God. It's well with me. It's well, it's well, it's well. And this morning I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad my salvation means something, Brother Chad. Hey, I'm glad my salvation has got some substance to it. Why? Because we have a risen Savior. Tell the neighbors, hallelujah. We got a risen Savior. That gets a bunch of folks out here on the morning. Because there is a real God. There is a Jehovah God. And He sits on high and He looks down low. He makes intercessions for me and you. And we are not alone today in your confusion, in your sadness, in your depression. You are not alone on your road to Emmaus. You might have thought you might need to walk away. But God the Savior has come today to walk beside you to tell you the truth of the matter. You ain't got to walk away. You ain't got to quit believing. He's alive. He's well. And we have something we can believe in. Amen. We have something we can hold in our hands. Amen. There is no loopholes. There is no holes in the Word. And the Word is true. And this morning I can hold on to the Word. That's right. Amen. I'm glad this morning I can keep believing. I don't have to stop. Just because he died, I didn't have to stop. Oh, but because he lives, I can keep on believing. Amen. And I can keep on walking. Amen. And I can keep on going on for God. Yeah. And man, there's no need to walk away. There's no need not to believe in the Word. There's no need to doubt him now. I begin to think of this last one. There's a song, one of my favorite songs is named No Need to Doubt Him Now. You'll see even though these men were having a hard time, woo, even though they were in that situation of walking away, Jesus came to them. He began to explain the scriptures. He began to reveal things unto them. And it began, it began to be late in the day. And they said, won't you just come with us, Jesus? Oh, they didn't even realize it was Jesus yet. Won't you just come with us, sir? It's already been late in the evening. You can come, stay with us, eat with us, commune with us. And they find themselves, they find themselves sitting down at a table. And I like this. Jesus took the bread. He broke it. Then he blessed it. He blessed it. Then he broke it. And then he, the Bible says he gave it to them. I read in the book of John, I believe it is, where he said he is the bread of life. Amen. And that his body was broken. That we may be made whole. Amen. And because of, that was just a good interpretation for me. And because he took the bread, he blessed the bread, he broke the bread, and beyond that he gave it to them. This morning when his life was broken and his life was put to death, it did nothing. He gave me life. And he gave me new life because of that. Here's the part I'm going to get happy with. He began to bless it. He broke the bread and he gave it to them. Maybe y'all don't understand what that does for me and you. Our life is made whole because his was broken. Yeah. You are able to be who you are because he was broken. Bless him. Because he suffered transgressions, you and I walked away free. Because he paid the debt, we're debt free. Because he stood in our place, we don't have to die. And that's why we come this morning. But here's the part that really gets to me. After that, Jesus broke the bread, blessed it and everything, and he vanished. And at that very moment, 
One of them said to the other, did not our hearts burn within us? Amen. Amen. And when he speaks, I know his voice. Yeah. Ask Amen. Mary in the garden. Great. She, she said, he said, Mary, and she said, Master, when he speaks, you know his voice. Did our hearts not burn with, hey, this morning my heart's a burning inside my bones. I'm like Jeremiah. I wanted to walk away. I wanted to quit, but there's a burden down in my bones that won't let me quit. Hallelujah. There's a burning on the inside that won't let me walk away. There's a burning on the inside that won't let me quit believing. There's a burning on the inside. Oh, hallelujah for the burden of the bones inside of me. I'm glad that the Holy Spirit, because He's alive, He's alive in me. And I'm glad this morning you don't have to leave the way you came. You don't have to keep walking towards Emmaus. The Bible says toward the end that they return to Jerusalem. They did a 180, honey. They turned around. They made their way back. And I don't believe it was a sad trot. I don't believe it was a sad, lonely walk. I believe it was a dead sprint. I'm glad this morning that he's alive. He's well. He's a, oh, and beyond that, I like the way they said it. He's alive indeed. The Bible says the sun, the sun sets free is free indeed. What's that word indeed mean? It's sure. There is no changing it. There's nothing that can mark it out. Amen. It's sure. Bless and there's no need to doubt Him now. Amen. Even these, all these years later, He's not ascended back into heaven. All the disciples are dead and laid in their graves. But there's still no need to doubt Him now. He's still the same God that arose on the third day, on that early, that third morning. As the sun arises, it is a representation of how the Lord Jesus arose from the grave. Could you imagine the, the talk around Jerusalem? He's alive. Can you believe it? He's alive. There's a lot of folks that come to church. Y'all come because it's Easter and y'all want to look nice. Praise God. That's okay. I'm going to preach the word to you. That he is alive. That I've got a reason to come. I've got a reason to believe. I've got a reason to keep walking back towards Jerusalem. I want to walk towards Jerusalem. There's going to be a new Jerusalem that falls down one of these days. And I'm going to head that way. Praise God. I'm going to head toward his way. I might go back and find an empty tomb. And he, they said he didn't find him there. Well, but hallelujah on the road to Emmaus. He came and walked with me. And on your road of life, you might be walking all alone. And you might be walking and worry about what you believe in. But this morning, Jesus has made a pit stop by Trinity Baptist Church. He's made a stop by 1434 Chronic Town Road. And he wants to tell you, don't you quit walking, quit walking away. Don't you quit believing. Don't you doubt me now. And this morning, he is who he said he is. He is who he said he is and more. He's alive today. It's something to be excited about. We are not doing this in vain. I'm not wasting breath this morning. But I'm talking about a real God. I'm talking about a real Savior. I'm talking about a real homecoming one of these days. I'm looking forward to it. I'm look, I have hope. I've got peace. There was so much you could preach on the day he arose. The day he rose, we got so much more than what we just read about. Right. Oh my goodness, I'm not about to be done, Daddy. You might as well get ready. <laughs> There's two choices in life when it comes to the Savior arising. There's two choices. There's only two. You, I went to wind the bear, so you ain't sharing. There's only two. You only got two. <laughs> it's either to believe or not to believe. Right. Real simple. Even us screens do not understand that. <laughs> it's either believe or not believe. If you believe, hallelujah, you got hope. You can have joy. You can have peace in your life knowing that He is a real God. He will do what He said He'll do. He'll be where He said He'd be. He'll even be the places you think He won't show up at. That's right. Because of that, Daddy, we don't have to doubt Him. We don't have to doubt Him. I'm glad of that today. I, I love you. Remember what today is about. 
God blesses us with things. We had an Easter egg hunt last night. That's a blessing. We had a great time. And I begin to think, everybody says Friday's here, Sunday's coming. I read that all over Facebook all weekend. I'm glad that now in my life, Sunday's every day. Glad he's alive every day. Amen. Every day he's alive. It's Sunday every day in my book. He's alive every day. He'll die never again. He'll reign on high forevermore. And now I can I got life. I've got it more abundantly. I'm happy today. You ought to smile. Ought, even though you had to wake up early, you ought to just smile because you're here. That's right. Amen. I'm done now. Y'all about to eat some biscuits and bread. <laughs> Come on, Dad. We're going to eat some ham. Praise God for ham. <laughs> I'm glad this morning. I love you. Are you looking for a place to worship God in spirit and in truth? Hello, I'm Frankie Green, pastor of Trinity Baptist Church in Auburn, Georgia. We would like to invite you to be in our service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 with morning worship at 11. Sunday evening worship begins at 6 and Wednesday night prayer service at 7. We are a King James Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist church reaching out to those who need a special touch from God. For more information, you can visit us at TrinityBaptistAuburn.com or on Facebook at Trinity Baptist Church Auburn. We welcome you to Trinity Baptist Church where you will become part of a family.